Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I'm in very early this morning because we actually have a delayed opening today. There was a lot of freezing rain um, and sleet last night. So instead of coming in like right when the kids would come in, I thought, you know what, I'll take advantage of the two hours and finish setting up a lab that I'm doing with the AP class. So we're looking at buffers today. And so I have a properties of buffers lab that we're doing. It's a Flynn lab, very typical Flynn lab. Um, so I'm gonna actually come in and try it out because I've actually never done it before. So I'm gonna do that lab and then I also have to record a video for the AP class on buffer capacity. So I'm gonna do that. And then of course I have to make some copies and things of the actual lab and then some things for my CP class. Now this video really isn't about any of the things that I'm doing in my classes today. What I really wanted to talk to you about is some strategies that I'm experimenting with in order to ensure that my students are completing their work. I'm sure you're all experiencing this year in that if it's not getting done in class, then the students aren't doing anything at home. And so today, I want to talk to you about some things that I'm doing, and of course, that I want this to be an open conversation. So if there's some things that you're trying that I'm not mentioning in my video, I'd love to know what they are, so just leave a comment down below. But for right now, I am going to finish the prep for the lab, and then of course, like I said, record my video and do some copies but I will be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later, probably not during the school day because all our class periods are 24 minutes long today. So it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be really hard for me to get on here, but I'll try. So either way, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Well, happy Saturday. As you can imagine, it was a really busy day yesterday and I have to finish up my video from home because I had the delayed opening and those 24 minutes went by with each of my classes so quickly. And then by the time I was able to sit down and record, I actually had to leave school because I had plans after work. So here I am and I thought I would just come on here and finish my video. And so it's gonna be a little bit more of an informal video, so I'm sorry, but I still feel it's important to talk about what I originally wanted to talk about because I think so many of us as teachers are experiencing the fact that our students are just not doing work. They just are not doing work. And if it's not done in class, then they're not going to do it, period. And so I want to talk about three different ways that I've kind of developed these like assignment interventions, these things that I'm doing to make sure that the work gets done. Because that really is at the end of the day, the most important thing. We want our students to do the work and it's nice for the students to see value in it. So some of these strategies are kind of nice too because they can also see the value in completing their work at home as well. Strategy number one, I've talked about this before, especially if you've taken my professional development with the teacher prepper and I've talked about this in my flip learning videos. And, you know, I've talked about flip learning. You all know that I have a flip classroom for the most part. Um, I obviously don't flip every single lesson every single day, but some lessons lend themselves towards flipping better than others. Now for those flip lessons, whether it be video content that my students are watching or whether it be maybe reading an article, whatever they have to do to be prepared for class the next day, if they don't do it, when they come in, I check it. And if it's not done, I expect them to go into the lab area and to complete the work that they're missing. Now, for me, I'm all about natural consequences. And I think that that's a real natural consequence that makes it very real for the students in understanding that if you don't do what you need to do to be ready for class the next day, then you're going to have to miss out on the activity or whatever fun thing that we're going to be doing in class. And so by asking the students to complete the work in the lab area, it sends the message like, like, okay, you're not ready to participate. It's not very punitive. And it just ensures that the work gets done and that the students can effectively participate in whatever activity you're completing in class. The second thing that I've started to do in my classroom, and this is new, I've actually never done this before, is I've started implementing these things called quarter sheet quizzes. I actually learned about these in Pogol. So I'm a big Pogol person. It stands for Process Oriented Guided Inquiry Learning. And usually with Pogol, you'll do a Pogol activity and then you'll do a quarter sheet quiz to see what the students retain the next day. But for me, what I've been doing is I've been administering a quarter sheet quiz as soon as the students come in, basically on their homework. So some people may call this like a do now quiz or a bell work quiz. But what's kind of nice, especially if it's an ed puzzle, if the students are taking notes on the ed puzzle, I allow them to use their notes when they're taking the do now quiz. So it provides some incentive for the students to engage authentically with the video resource that I'm providing 
because then they can use that information on their actual quiz. And so this makes sure that the students are prepared and you don't necessarily have to tell the students. I mean, if you're not a big believer in pop quizzes, that's fine. But this has really just become a norm in my classroom. Every time there's some sort of like homework assignment, something, nothing like too hard. Like obviously you don't want to give your student a quiz on something that's like really difficult, like stoichiometry or something like that. I did one, for example, on just like uh, naming and formula writing. I did one on um, writing like the diatomic elements, like really simple, quick things. And then I think more recently this week, I just did one on scientific notation. So if there's like something that your students need to watch that maybe is review, that makes them need to be prepared for the next class period, the quarter sheet quiz works out really great. These quizzes are typically, I would say, taking no more than five minutes to complete. And then usually they're about two to three points. I really don't make it very many points, but it gives them some incentive for them to complete the work so that they're ready for class the next day. And then the third way that I'm trying to encourage my students to do the work is actually something old that I used to do and I'm bringing it back. And so there are these things called pink slips. Now these are things that I learned about when I was a brand new teacher and <laughs> I've talked about it before and I'll say it again, Harry Wong's the first days of school, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, it, it was such a helpful thing for me as a brand new teacher. And so Harry Wong's the first day of school, I saw this like little um, thing called a pink slip. It's basically like a responsibility paper. And so the students uh, fill it out whenever they don't complete their homework. They have to write their name. They have to select the reason why they didn't complete their work. And then they have to sign off on it. And when I was a new teacher, I noticed that as soon as I started handing these out and the students had to tell me why they didn't do it, I found that the student completion rate for homework went up significantly. And so this is something, like I said, that I haven't really been doing because really because of COVID, I didn't want to, you know, give students more papers than I had to, you know, just concerns with hand washing and things like that. So now that things have kind of died down a little bit, this is something that I'm going to definitely be implementing more because um, I really need to know, like, why are students not completing the work? Are they finding it too difficult? Are they, you know, busy with sports or things outside of school? You know, what's going on that's keeping them from being able to complete the work that I'm asking them to do? Okay, so those are the three ways that I am trying to encourage my students to do their work. What ways are working for you? But this is definitely an open discussion. I'd love to know what you're trying and what has worked for your students. If you would leave a comment down below, that would be amazing. I am definitely going to give you guys a freebie, which is that pink slip. So you can have a copy of the pink slip if that's something that you want to try. And then what I'll probably do too is maybe give you a quarter sheet quiz template so that you can type in whatever you want to type in for your quiz if you want to try that strategy with your students as well. Either way, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.